Prime Minister Churchill rallied his people in what he called their finest hour. He had offered them nothing but blood and sweat, toil and tears. They accepted his gift. Britain was fighting in the Seven Seas, while the invader was only 20 miles away, and the French fleet was no longer its ally. Nazi submarines, mines, planes and surface raiders constituted a formidable menace to Britain's lifeline, the freighters that brought her food and raw materials for war. Britain hung on. Now the Nazi Air Force, Hitler's ace weapon, was brought into play. German bombers attacked English ports, so that even if the freighters escaped submarines and mines, they faced destruction and harbor and the lifeline could be cut at its source. They bombed railroads and factories to disrupt transportation and war production. They bombed by day, and when the Royal Air Force smashed more than 180 of the bombers out of the sky in one session, they bombed by night. The face of London changed. Historic landmarks disappeared. Night after night, London was left a sea of fire. Plymouth was battered. 